Hello, everyone, and welcome to Radiant Pearls Ministries. I'm Jeanette Bradley. And I'm Justina Sanchez. Today we have with us the lovely, the talented, the creative and local artist. She's also a founder of Kingdom Creativity International and Kingdom Writers Association, Mrs. Jill Wyckoff. Welcome. Hi, Hi. thanks. Hello. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Certainly my honor. Thank you. Okay, we have to know. What's your favorite dessert? <laughs> I knew this one was coming. <laughs> okay, so um, I love all desserts, but I know you want one. So I'm going to go with chocolate. Yes, yes. You know, you can't you go wrong with chocolate. chocolate. I love it. At least every day. Yeah, I sure. love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah. So would you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Yeah. So about myself, first and foremost, I'm a child of God. Amen. I'm a child of God. Amen. I um, I love all things creative. I'm very creative. I uh, love to laugh and have fun, and I love adventure. And most of all, I love getting to know people. I love encouraging people. That's my happy place. And so I get to do that through a number of ways. Um, I call myself an encounter artist. So an encounter artist is someone who uses creative expression, whatever that creative expression is, to encounter people with the love of God love power presence of god because you know art does that creative expression they do that and uh, and i'm also a co-founder along with my husband of uh kingdom creativity international and uh an offshoot of that is kingdom writers association so what we do is basically we encourage creatives to step into their god-given creative assignment their identity as creatives and to use their creative expression to reach people for jesus and uh, to bring hope and restoration and uh, healing, salvation, uh, to impact culture. And uh, that's a powerful thing. And we can do that through creativity. It's a beautiful thing. It is. And, and you're very incredible. You're amazing. I remember the first time that I met you, you had put on a production of your book. And um, you stimulated every emotion that I had, and I remember that I, I could barely even speak. I, I, I was trying to talk to you, but I, I could not even get the words out. You're, you're so amazing. And um, would you tell us, this amazing journey that you're on, what has been some of the roadblocks that has gotten in the way of that? Yeah, it's, you know, has been an amazing journey. And uh, the roadblock, I think the biggest roadblock to anything for me moving forward has been myself. Mm -hmm. I am my own. I have to get, I had to learn how to get out of my own way, mm -hmm. right? And I think we all have to kind of do that to a degree. Um, you know, I grew up um, in a loving home, a great home, but I, I, I fed myself on the lies um, I'm not, I'm, I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm this and that and the other. And when you start taking on that identity, hence the book and the, and the, uh, the production you talked about, Once Upon a Backpack, it's like you're wearing this invisible backpack and all the lies get stuffed inside. I'm ugly, I'm stupid, I'm this, I'm that. And then you carry this identity with you. That's as I did. Um, I carry this identity with me. And I ended up making choices based on that false identity. Exactly. Mm. And even after I met Jesus, uh, quite honestly, I still carried that. That was, that was like an old, old habit, right? You're carrying that old dead man mm -hmm. with you. And so I had to learn how to get out of my own way. I had to learn how to, to receive uh, how Christ saw me, God's identity for myself, which was completely different and actually the exact opposite of everything I saw in myself because God sees me as worthy, not as unworthy. God, I, I, I guess oh, I'm not confident in that. Well, God is my confidence. My confidence is in him. It's not in me. Everything that I, that I thought about myself that I knew to be true was actually a lie. So once I discovered the truth about myself, I could step into the truth and take off that backpack, offload it and start moving in what the real me was, not the new me, because it wasn't about becoming someone else. It wasn't about becoming someone I wasn't. It was about discovering who I already was. And when I did that, then I was able to make choices. I was able to get out of my own way mm -hmm. and allow God to lead me and me to say yes. Isn't it just so comforting to know it's not about us? You yes. Know? And so that for me, that was a huge relief. Yes. Us, you know. Um, so what helped you move forward? Uh, a number of things, actually. 
I, I was, I started painting. Let's, let's backtrack a little bit. I started painting. I paint with my hands. I'm a finger painter. That's what I do. And I started painting and just in the comfort of my own home where no one could see me. And I had a friend named Henry Haney, who a lot of your viewers might know. And he was doing a worship event and he invited me to paint at the worship event. And I said, absolutely not because I don't paint in front of people. I don't do anything in front of people. <laughs> that was my, my thing back then. Oh, no, 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 I can't do that, you know? And I disqualified myself. And I sat in that fear of like, oh, I'll look stupid. I'm not good enough and all the rest, right? That we tell ourselves. And Henry kept nudging me and the Holy Spirit kept nudging me. And I finally gave in. So it was a combination of God and others that brought me in and gave me the experience, that gave me the opportunity to step in. And I did very, very hesitantly, very hesitantly. I, it was a 24 hour event. I went at like 2 AM, hunkered down in the back corner, no easel for me, no, just like painting like this on a table. And uh, a lot of really cool things happened that evening. And I started learning different things. And I, 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 I say, funny enough, I say finger painting changed my life. And in some ways it did because it opened the door. I took that, that baby step and then God met me there. And then he started teaching me about my identity and literally about the fingerprints in my hands and how we all have our own unique fingerprints. It's very specific by design. We're never supposed to be like someone else. We were always created to be like ourselves. And if that part doesn't get seen, then that part of God's heart doesn't get revealed. And so what we have to say or paint or dance or sing or whatever, it matters because that's a revelation of God's heart that someone else doesn't have. And so by that opportunity stepping in, it created more opportunities. And that's, that's what happened. And that's how it was, it was the whole way. Cause once you get, once you get comfortable in that place, God takes you to a new place. <laughs> and then, and then it's, it's my pastor saying, and now you're going to speak. And I say, but I don't speak in front of people. And he goes, yes, you do. Because you know, we need other people around us to see what God sees in us and draw us forward. And so then I started speaking and then, you know, then you, you move a little forward, you're teaching and then, and you're a pastor and then you're a poet and then you're a performer and you're, and God brings you through each, each phase. And it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful dance with him. Right. But you have to say yes. And that's what I did. I kept saying yes. And my, my thing was do it afraid, but do it anyway. So each time I did it, each time I tried something new, I was scared to death. Seriously, I was just so afraid and I did it anyway. And, uh, and I think that was the key is to be tenacious and do it anyway. Say yes, even with your, when you're afraid and uh, God shows up every time. He definitely does. Mm -hmm. uh, so what would you say to somebody that might say you had talked a little bit about fear and, and just do it afraid if you have to, which I love because I do that as well. <laughs> yeah. um, but somebody that might say, well, you know, I'm looking at Jill and Jill did all these things and she's, you know, God gave her so much creativity and that, that's just not me. Like, I just don't have that. Um, she's, she's very valuable and, and it's great that she found her niche. And, um, but, but that person, that, that is just not me. Yeah. Um, that's a good question. And I, I'll speak to first the creative aspect because obviously that's, we pastor creative. So, um, firmly, we firmly believe that everyone is creative because you're created by the master creator, right? right? It's in your DNA. Now, what we do is we put creativity in this box and we say, if it doesn't look like painting, if it doesn't look like flower arranging, if it doesn't look like singing or dancing, then I must not be creative. And yet creativity is expressed in so many ways out of the box. If you're a stay at home mom, creating ways to entertain your children, you are creative. If you're in, in a business situation and you're solving problems, and coming up with solutions and strategies or innovating new ideas, you are creative. So we believe first of all, first and foremost, everybody is creative, but we also believe that everybody is unique. And I think the trouble comes when we try to compare ourselves, like I'm not like you. Right. So for example, when I was um, being asked to speak at our church, um, our, our senior pastor at the time, Carlette Muster. Now, Pastor Carlette Muster, if you have ever seen her, is a dynamo. She is a dynamic speaker. 
she's eloquent and all the words and the teaching and everything just flows and you're like <gasps> she's dynamic all the way around oh music everything. everything everything you just i mean honestly most times you're just going yes right it's just like just amazing and i thought i you know they started giving me these opportunities to speak now i would say to myself i'm not a speaker God knew I was, but I disqualified myself and I was very, very afraid. And I said, God, I can't be like her. And he said, I don't want you to be like her. I want you to be like you. So good. That was the release. When you realize I'm not trying to be someone else, I'm just trying to be me to a greater extent. I'm trying to be the fullness of me. Then the comparison, which is just nonsense, washes away. And when you're like you, it's actually kind of easy. Now I can be kind of goofy and I can be over dramatic and I can be whatever, you know, but it's me and I'm, and it's, and it's easier to be me than it is to be someone else. And not everyone's going to like me and that's okay. Cause I'm pleasing God. I'm not pleasing man. Right? So it's, it's just, there's such a release. And I, I also think that fear plays such a big part in that there's there's this combination of comparison and fear and fear is just false expectation appearing real right so my expectation for myself was that I will come off stupid right I won't be like her right let's even if I was to come off stupid it's a small price to pay to see somebody else get healed yeah. To see somebody else get saved. You see somebody else, to, to see God work through you to deliver someone. If I come off goofy, well, so be it. It's a really small price to pay. So when you think about what your fear is and you kind of backtrack it and play it out, are you willing to, to sacrifice, to be obedient? And uh, if you don't, you will be missing out on being a blessing like you've never, uh, you, you'll be missing out on being blessed and being the blessing. Right, and others will miss out on what you have to offer. Right, which is a part of him, like what you offer is different than what you offer, right. it's different what I offer, and yet it has to be that way mm -hmm. to get a full picture. Together. Yes, yeah. you have to get the full picture. And I love, I love what you said about do it afraid. You know, oftentimes there's people waiting on the other side of your obedience yes. to get that touch from God, to get that healing, to receive yes. salvation. And so to do it afraid is so huge. Oftentimes we think we have to be qualified in right. order for me to do it. I have to fully know everything about it. That's not the case. So we would like to challenge you, yeah. whatever the Lord has put on your heart, to jump in and do it afraid. Let him meet you there. Give him that opportunity to show you his faithfulness. We, I just, I love that so much. So thank you. And it's biblical. Because who's qualified in the Bible? I mean, you know what I mean? I mean is, is Peter qualified? Is Paul qualified? It's biblical, right? And if we don't, and yes, it, when we're doing new things, it can be a little like, ah, right? But once you step in and do it, the more you do it, you're not afraid anymore. And then you're like, wow, I can do this. And then God shows you something new. Love it. Can you share with us how God has surprised you? Oh gosh, there are so many surprises. Um, one thing is that I'm sitting here, right? <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> you who said you'd never do anything in front of people, now you're doing stuff in front of people. The world. Exactly, exactly. And, um, and that is surprising when you, you know, we all start humble beginnings, right? And I'm still humble beginnings. Right. Already, we're still yeah. we're on our trajectory. We will never arrive. Yeah. We will, we're just we're just going for the prize, but we're never going to arrive. And I love the way he meets me every step of the way. And it's you know, it. which one of you? What have you said? It wasn't all about you. Is that Justine? You said that, right? It's not all about you. I, I sometimes say it's not all about you. And yet it's all about you. And this is what I mean by that. It's not at all about me. And yet it's all about me in the way that I have to be all in. Yeah. So in some ways it's not anything about me. In some, some ways it's everything about me because I have to be all in. But God surprises me in that he shows up in the most incredible, tangible, beautiful, out of the box ways that I never ever could have imagined. And uh, 
He always shows up. He's never not shown up. That's right. And it, it, like you said, it is all about you and how you're going to respond. And if you're going to be obedient, if you're going to listen and the choices that you're going to make in response to him pursuing you and calling you up to more. Exactly. So I'm super excited to know. Tell us your favorite testimony because you have so many. This is going to be really good. I'm ready. <laughs> I do. It, I do. It's, it's super hard to pick one. Um, but there is one that I, I'm especially fond of. And I, I have experienced people being saved, healed, and delivered from finger paintings mm -hmm. or from writing or from poetry or, or what have you, which is mind-blowing and surprising um, every time. But uh, one of my favorites is when we were in Austria and uh, I was painting for a church, uh, for an outreach, and we were in the park and I was painting. Now I paint mostly abstract and some surreal, but mostly abstract. So they were, they had this event and some people were praying and some people were singing and I was painting. And uh, I had this woman, I had painted, uh, it was almost at the end of this painting, very abstract, very abstract. And this older woman comes up to me and says, how much is that painting? I must have that painting. And I said, well, you know, I, I'd love to give you this painting. I'm here with this church. Let me ask the pastor and then, then I'm sure she'll say it's okay. And, but she was very adamant. I must have that painting. That painting's for me. I must have that painting. I don't know if I'm doing an accent, well, but, but you get the idea, right? So, um, so she went off and she said she'll, she'll, she'd come back. So this is the, the, the shorter version of this story. This woman named Gertrude, uh, had, her father was a Nazi and he had done un thinkable things to the Jews. And she had carried the weight and the guilt and the shame and the trauma of that her whole life. And it manifested in a number of illness, illnesses and, and emotional um, conflict and suffering in her. And uh, she was carrying the weight of all of this physically and emotionally in her body. And what I found out is that I had painted a prophetic word that she had received for her healing Three, week, three years prior, wow. I had painted the prophetic word. That's why she said, it's for me. Wow. I must have that painting. Wow. Now, the painting was abstract, an abstract painting. And yet she so clearly saw that prophetic word for her healing. And she got the painting and she got the healing. Now, here's the other part of that. So here was this woman who was traumatized and experienced all the manifestation of what her father, a Jew, had done to the uh, father, sorry, what a father, her father, a Nazi, had done to the Jews. Well, I'm a Christian by choice, but I'm a Jew by my heritage. Mm -hmm. So God had a Jew paint her healing. Wow. And to me, <laughs> to me, that's incredible. It's God. Like, it, you, can, you can't make these things <laughs> up. You cannot make these things up. It's amazing, just, it's amazing how he, he works and just continues to blow my mind. Yes. Um, the, just, I love the way that he is using you and the gifts and the talents that he's put in within you. Um, so what are some of the fa your favorite parts of the journey that you're on right now? Yeah, we are in interesting times. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We are all in interesting times with pandemic and political uh, things happening and, and societal unrest. What I, what I think is my favorite part about right now is that he's doing things in a new way mm -hmm. and he's shifting things and he's calling us to a different assignment and um, which, which can be kind of, again, like, ah, you know, it means maybe laying down something that you had picked up before. It, it, it's a redirect and a pivot. Yet my favorite part is the unknown. My favorite part, which, which used to be the part that would scare me the most, is now the part that I love because it's all an adventure. And I, and I just say yes. And so he is having us do different things. He's having my husband and I do some shifting. And um, we've started a, a Wednesday night um, a live stream called Backstage Pass. And we invite people into this conversation with their master creator. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, we are going forward with different things and, and creating um, in, in Kingdom Writers Association, creating new things there. But we've got chapters now forming around 
the country. And that's new. That's something new that he's doing because before we were just in San Diego and now with pandemic and online community, we're broadening to the, na to the nation and the nations. Um, we're starting a, uh, a parachurch ministry called The Exchange. And it's, it's going to be look a little bit different than, than typical church. And it's going to take a format of where we're sitting together, having conversations about how Jesus is relevant and real and the answer for our lives. And it invites people in who may not be wanting to step into a traditional church. And it's not that we're against churches. It's just that we're coming alongside church to offer something that's a little bit different. And I love that God is just kind of sparking these, these ideas to take us into this next season of reaching more people for him. That's great. Will you tell our viewers how they can get on Backstage Pass, how they can become a member of Kingdom Creativity International, Kingdom Writers Association, and everything that you, how to get your book? Okay, I'm going to do that now. So for Kingdom Creativity International, which is all creative expression, we're not putting you in a box or putting God in a box. It's uh, kingdomcreativityinternational.com. And for those of you who have uh, an inkling to write, even if you've been given a, a, a prophetic word and uh, you haven't started writing all the way up from the beginning all the way to those who are published, we want to support you and champion you. That is Kingdom Writers Association. Dot com. Both of those are also Facebook pages and Facebook groups, so find us on Facebook as well. And uh, Jill Elizabeth Wyckoff is uh, the, my author name, and um, you can find my book on Amazon. It's called Once Upon a Backpack. Will and, you spell uh, your last name? W-Y-C-K-O-F-F. -F. And you can connect with me at uh, jillwyckoff.com. Wonderful. Yeah. So what advice would you have or a good word that you have that you want to give our viewers today? Okay, so you have so much wisdom, so you just don't have to like. All right. Let's, let's, let's <laughs> narrow it all down. Um, my biggest advice is to say yes, is to say yes to what God is calling you to do and to step in and do it even if you're afraid. Just do it. Do it afraid, but do it. Step into what God is calling you to do. Offload the backpack of lies that you have been uh, maybe walking around with and uh, step into the reality of who God says you are and offload the lies of who you are not. Uh, one of the ways you can do that is actually make a list of the lies. Write them down, tear them up. Then put uh, post-its around of who you are, who God says you are. If you're wondering who that is, it's the exact opposite of the lies that you tore up. And put those around and speak them over yourself. Say, I am worthy. I am an artist. It took me forever to learn how to say that. I am an artist. It didn't flow off my lips, but now it does. I am an artist because I spoke it over myself. I'm, a, I'm receiving that. And you can too. You can say that about yourself, whatever it is that God is saying. I am worthy. I am lovable. I am, I am, I am uh, whatever God says you are. I am smart. I am talented. I am gifted. I am created uh, to be like him in his image and likeness. So whatever that looks like, just expand your view of who you are and step into it. So, so wonderful and full of wisdom. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so we have just a few minutes left, but we would like to know if you would open up the opportunity to, for our viewers to accept Jesus into their heart. I would love that. So here's the thing. Everything that I said today comes from a basis and understanding that I am a child of God, that I'm a child of God. Jesus has changed everything in my life. I took a very crooked path to get here. I didn't walk the straight and narrow. Um, if you read my book, you'll see that I have, I have dealt with molestation. I've dealt with rape. I've dealt with murder in, in my family, um, uh, divorce, drugs, all of the, all of the, the crooked path that led me to this place. And then I met Jesus and I realized that he actually went to the cross and took all of those devastating dark places upon himself. And he called me out 
And he said, Jill, he said, my name. He said, I did this for you. And I'm taking all of the shame and the guilt and the, the bad decisions and all of the consequences. I'm taking it on my own shoulders. And that's what he does to each and every one of us. He's calling your name. He, didn't, he just isn't some, some strange person far away that went and, and did something for everybody else. He did it for you. And he's saying, all of those places, all of those hurts, I've got, I've got, and I'm taking them from you. And in return, if you turn to me, in return, I'm giving you my peace, and I'm giving you restoration, and I'm giving you righteousness, and I'm restoring you to the arms of your father, who's running out to say, my baby, my baby, and he's running after you. And it's so simple, because all we have to do is say, God, I blew it. I don't want to do it all on my own anymore. I'm not doing a good job of it. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving my life to you. I'm submitting my life to you. I want what you have for me. I don't want that old life. I'm done with it. I want what you have for me. And then you just receive it. You just receive it. It's as simple as that. There's, a, there's this heart shift that happens within your heart and life becomes different. And you just step into everything that Jesus died. He died to give you. And everything changes. Nothing ever will be the same. And he comes into your life and he puts his spirit into your life. His Holy Spirit actually lives inside of you and comforts you and guides you and empowers you to do all the things that God has always put on your heart to do. You know, God designed you. He designed you. He formed you. He formed you. He's known about you and known every hair on your head long before the foundations. He knows everything about you. And he's saying, I see you. I see you. I see you. I know you. I love you. I love you. Will you love me back? And it's as simple as that. And I just said, I love you, Jesus. And he's loved me back. And so I, I pray that that's a decision that you will make for yourself, that you'll say, you know what? That sounds like a good plan. It sounds like a plan that's better than the one that I've been walking out, and that's for me. And I pray that you make that decision. And I bless you to know how powerfully he loves you. And he's right there with you right now. Right now. So grab it. Grab hold of him. And then run. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> I love you. The, um, the love of God overwhelms me all the time. And uh, just thank you for sharing that power and the love of Jesus. It's so, so good to have you on today. Thank you. So remember, you have strength, you have hope, mm -hmm. and you have loveliness. We'll see you yeah. next time. <laughs> <laughs>